Welcome back. This is episode 10. Unfortunately, I think it's, I don't think it is, I know it is. This is take two. Some of you know from the comments section that the reason there was such a long, long, long pause, apart from the bike not working, is that I've had some technical issues with SSDs, SDs, all sorts of stuff. And unfortunately, well, amazingly, I filmed all of the diagnostics, all the reasons that the bike wasn't starting. And there were many, many individual gremlins and one really big one, which none of you will have guessed. So unfortunately, I don't have all the footage of solving all the problems. But I'm gonna talk through everything and try and get some kind of demonstratory footage of the things that went wrong. This one's gonna be quite talky, but if you've got a problem starting your 690, this will probably really help you. Let's get into it. But where do I uh, start? According to the internet, there are three things that you need. You need fuel, you need compression, and you need spark. And that's according to the internet and my boss, who's an engine engineer. That is, as I've discovered over the last two and a half months, that is slightly oversimplifying all the things that you need. But if you investigate them and think of them as umbrella things to look at, so you investigate all the systems that lead up to a spark, all the systems that lead up to getting compression and getting fuel. Uh, oh my God, get on with it. <laughs> Let's start with fuel. Now, initially, I couldn't get above 46 psi fuel pressure. Now, the 2009 690 Enduro and Enduro R, and probably SMT and all the other ones as well. Your bike may be different. Different years have different pressure requirements, but this bike is between 48 psi and I think it's 50, 54 or 56 psi. I'll put it on the screen of pressure. So that's when your fuel pump is forcing fuel up to a pressure regulator and then on from there up to your injector. And at the point of the injector, there needs to be a certain amount of pressure so that when the injector briefly opens to let the fuel spray through, it's gotta be at a certain pressure, otherwise not enough fuel is gonna go through or too much depending, you know, but you get, you get the idea, right? But I've only got 46 PSI, so gotta investigate. Right. I got in touch with Grey Area KTM, the people that I bought the big bore kit from and told them what was going on and they said that I needed to try, even though I was not reaching the 48 PSI, I needed to try and get actually above that. So rather than aiming for good old 48 PSI, which is what you should be getting if you've got your stock pressure regulator in your fuel tank, you want to be aiming for just a little bit higher than that, probably around 50. So I took that and I just started to investigate how and why I haven't got 48 PSI. <laughs> this is what happened. So while I was putting the bike together three months ago, before all of, all of this, I was replacing the inline fuel filter, which is inside the fuel tank. And I basically this line here, this stuff. So basically you've got your fuel pump, goes up to there, a little bit of hose, and then this goes onto your pressure regulator here. And then there's a return valve to send all the excess over pressure fuel back to where the fuel pump sits. And I replaced this, but basically these, these tubes are single use. I mean, you can probably get away with using them once or twice, but my experience Experience so far in the four years that I've had this bike is that you can only really get a couple of uses out of them and you've got to put clamps on them so when you pull your bike apart you'll see that there's a little clamp on here but every time you pull it off because it's kind of plasticky it never really goes back to where it's supposed to be and so what you end up doing is finding that well as I found I'll show you a little picture of it or a little video of it because I managed to salvage that when I was pressurizing the system I was finding that fuel was coming out through here and through here where the connectors were so what I ended up doing is putting two two clips on there and there and two clips on there and there to try and get it to steal and in the end it led me to just realizing that it had to go. I've got a Golan fuel filter which can go outside of the fuel tank so basically what I've gone with is what's described as an NBR stroke NBR or if you're thinking SAE it's SAE J30 R12 submersible fuel line. So what I've done is I have removed between the pump, pump would be here so instead of all this gubbins I've just got a bit of submersible fuel line and it must be submersible if you use regular fuel line it will decay and it will oh, horrible what happens to it um, and so it runs all the way up and completely removes all of this so between the pump and the pressure regulator it's just one high pressure submersible fuel line that's one problem solved <laughs> right. So I did that and then I found I was still getting really subpar fuel pressure so I turned my attention to the pressure regulator so this is a pressure regulator normally it's got like a little what's it called o-ring there and an o-ring there and this is this goes into here like that and then it's bolted down so basically your fuel comes in and then it feeds back out. I can't remember which one is which, but basically when, it re when this reaches a certain pressure, it starts letting fuel out of this little hole and it just comes out through there. So you get a nice pressurized system, right? So to try and figure out why I wasn't getting pressure throughout the system, I took all of the tubing, so the pressure regulator, the pump, everything, and took it all out of the bike, connected it up back to the electronics on the bike so I could turn the bike on and see if there was any fuel leaks or anything coming out of anywhere in particular. It, was, it seemed to me like it was bleeding pressure out at 46 PSI, which is stopping 
at that point. I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll investigate the pump and see what's going on there. I had two pumps, because I had two tanks. You probably saw them in the background. There's one there, there's now one on the bike. Both, obviously the bike had a pump in it and the spare tank that I bought, which had better paintwork essentially, had a pump in it. Anyway, all the systems outside of this, I had this submerged in fuel in a jar and I fired up the whole system and I had a fuel pressure thing hooked up to the bike so the whole fuel system is all put together but where the injector is here basically you put this in line you fire it all up so this should read 48 to 50 psi when you turn on the bike and prime everything it should go and then hold there and then slowly it'll drop back down again what I was finding it was reaching 46 I couldn't seem to see anywhere it wasn't leaking through here it wasn't leaking there it wasn't leaking out of the injector what could it possibly be it's got to be the pressure regulator right <laughs> seems odd why would pressure regulator that was good enough to run the bike beforehand now be the cause of the bike not running now seems a little bit weird nonetheless I ordered a pump and pressure regulator kit from the only people that sell quantum pumps in the UK wink wink the only people that sell quantum pumps in the UK now I bought a kit that consists of a pressure regulator for 690 it doesn't tell you what pressure it is it just says pressure regulator for 690 and a quantum pump it all arrived two days later because I paid for you know extremely fast shipping I hooked it all up and found that the pressure would now not go over 37 psi <laughs> So got the hump a little bit, realized that the, you know, the pump is definitely doing its job perfectly fine and got a, let me show you something. I can show you this again. Maybe you've got a pump for um, pumping up the tires and whatnot. If it's got a gauge on it, right, all you need is a little bit of fuel hose, clamp it onto there, clamp it onto there and put the end of your pressure regulator into it. When you turn it on, it will tell you what your pressure regulator is regulating to. And I found that the pressure regulator that they'd sent me was like a 2.7 bar regulator. You need like a 3.2 to absolute minimal 3.3 ideally to run this particular pump system on this bike right so I got in touch with you know the guys that sold me the, the kit and they said nothing and eventually like three days later they said they they dispatched the correct pressure regulator right <laughs> when that arrived I took one look at it and engraved on it it said 400 kpo which is basically a four bar pressure regulator which puts it way above what it needs to be and what it should be so the problem with that is that if you've got too little pressure not enough fuel go goes in to actually get the bike to run right obviously if you've got way too much pressure the bike is running extremely rich because more fuel every time your injector opens briefly more fuel is going through than it's supposed to and everything's calculated based upon a particular flow rate and pressure so i got in touch with them and was like right you sent me the wrong one again and he basically said to me everyone in the uk uses either the one either one of these two that i've sent him and he's never had a complaint and i was like well if you look at the manual it says you need to achieve between 48 and about 54. you sent me one that achieves like 37 and one that gives me 60. i don't know what other what everyone else is doing but they could not look at their manual and i looked a little bit closer downloaded the manual for the newer model of bike and discovered that actually the lower pressure one is suitable for the newer models but not suitable for the older ones so I requested that I, you know, return the fuel pressure regulator. He said, if I didn't like it, I had to send back the whole lot. And I was like, what? I don't want to send back the pump. The pump's great, right? Just refund me the difference for what you charge for a pressure regulator. And he was like, no. So I take it all apart. So I had to take a step backwards, set my pump back, set my pressure regulators back. So now I'm stuck with my old pressure regulators and no pump whatsoever because the two pumps that I do have, one of them, I broke the barb end off of it and the other one I was just, this one, although it was allegedly new four years ago, it wasn't whirring as it should. And I think that's because I left it in the fuel tank for like seven months in the garden with no cap on the fuel tank. So it's just getting rain and crap and just rust and it's basically rusted up on the inside. I did, however, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for about in total about four hours and when I got it out and tested it the the flow rate was incredible compared to what it was like before um, and that was all based upon finding a forum post from 13 years ago and a, a guy basically had a fuel pump that was completely rusted and wouldn't move at all and he basically just nuked it in an ultrasonic cleaner for about seven hours and a year later it was still running like a brand new pump so I thought you know what I'll give that a go and I did that footage is gone as well all of it's gone uh, I'm not recreating that again and then I hooked, I hooked it up to the bike because obviously I've now got no pump because I sent back the quantum one I hooked this up to the bike and you know it's reaching four 46 psi but it's not going above that and then I spotted it right whether it was that it had been sat in the garden in the tank for ages or whether I destroyed it by putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner only in washing up liquid and warm water it wasn't there's no basically fuel under pressure was coming out from around the connectors that's why it was stopping at 46 psi right <laughs> 
Right, so I ordered a new pump from guys in Poland and I also ordered a new pressure regulator from guys in Poland. So I ordered a 3.5 bar pressure regulator, which should put me around 51 PSI. Pump turned up, pump is great, but I'm still only reaching about 47 PSI in the, in the full system, which I'm thinking probably is just about enough to run the bike, but it wouldn't start. So when I got the pressure regulator installed, it was reaching <laughs> The 3.5 bar, and it had three, it had 350 kPa written on it, which is 3.5 bar. And before I installed it, I looked at that and I was like, cool, but I'm just gonna pop it into the air pump and see what the pressure is actually regulating at before I install it and get it covered in you know petrol and everything. Turns out, I'll show you, right? When they come, you might not be able to make this out. Basically, it's a spring valve. When the pressure gets too much, that spring begins to compress inside this bit here. And that's how you determine. So the top of it is pressed in to create preload on the spring. Right, bear with me here. If you've got a pressure regulator which is not high enough for your needs or you're building like a slightly higher, a higher power bike and you want this a little bit more, you want to enrich in it at the pump system kind of thing. What you can do is you can get something that fits nicely snug in there and very gently just tap it with a hammer as I did because as you know, I don't have a vice anymore. Probably should get another one. And basically you increase the preload on that spring which raises the pressure. So this is my stock one from one of the tanks. What I ended up doing is sending back the one that says it's 350 but it's actually it ended up working out to be 2.9 bar so i got in touch with them and told them that they sent me a 2.9 bar and sent them pictures of me testing it and everything at which point they decided to blank me because they want to keep my money but we'll deal with that later on so what i've ended up doing is taking one of my stock ones and just bashing the end in. and now right with a bashed in pressure regulator a new slightly higher pressure pump allegedly i'm now averaging about 49 49 and a half psi at the injector which is great but while I was waiting for these things to turn up from Poland, I decided to turn my attention to the injector, right? Brand new injector, when you measure the resistance across these two poles here, should be about 12.5 kilo ohms. Give or take 0.6. Kilohms. I measured it and it was measuring about 19, which I thought was a bit much, but it was working. Like every time I did like the injector test, it was giving a nice little spray. But I decided what the hell, I'll send it off to Mr. Injector and get them to flow test it and make sure it's all nice and clear and blah, 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 blah. Turns out they couldn't do it. I thought, well, how hard can it be? So again, all the footage lost. I hooked, I made like a little thing so I could hook it up to a battery and like just switch it on and off with a little bit of power kind of thing. So I basically did it in the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned it out for ages whilst opening and closing the valve whilst under pressure with ultrasonic carb cleaner. And I was doing that for like an hour and a half. I got it out and then I flushed it forward and backwards with carb cleaner using this. So basically you put this in the end like that. You do up the clips and then you pressurize it and then using two wires in there with a battery, just tap it on and off to complete the circuit and it won't open it and it'll flush it through. It's pretty straightforward how it works. And the flow visibly did get better, right? <laughs> the downside was that this bit of fuel pipe here is not designed to deal with carb cleaner. So I'm flowing it through, I'm flowing it through and the flow's getting better. And I was like, oh, I'll just back flush it quickly. And it turned out what I'd been doing was little, like injecting little tiny particles of the rubber from inside this fuel line into the injector. So I then reached a point where the tiny little bits of rubber were now stopping the injector from closing. So now I've gone from like an injector that had a slightly high resistance value, but was working to a normal resistance value, but is like partially blocked and can't close. So it now just dribbles when you pressurize the system. So like a penis, I ruined my injector. I reckon I can probably get it sorted by sending it off to the guy who's back at work now, but I had to buy a new one. So. So that arrived and then I put the whole system back together and <laughs> and the bike still doesn't run. So we've got a decent pressure regulator achieving just under 50 PSI. We've got all new hoses and there's no leaks in the system. We've got a new fuel pump, which is allegedly slightly higher pressure than the stock one. I've put it all back together and it shows that it's running the correct pressure just before the injector, but doesn't run. So that is fuel taken care of. So we've eliminated all those issues kind of thing. Moving on, compression. <laughs> ordered a uh, compression testing kit. This is pretty straightforward, actually. Doing a proper compression test is quite hard on a 690 because on the camshaft, there is a auto decompressor. So when it's turning at low RPMs, i.e. when you're starting the bike with the starter motor, this stops the pressure from actually reaching the super high highs that you need to measure for a compression test. 
So, while I was waiting for the compression tester thing to arrive, I decided to investigate all the other things that lead to having the correct compression within the bike. So, what that means is you've got to check your valve clearances. You need to make sure that your rocker arms are in the correct state and need to make sure that everything is lined up as it should be. You don't want your cam chain to have too much extra tension in it. You don't want your cam chain tensioner to be knackered. So I checked all these things and in doing so, I decided, I went in, I checked my inlet valves and my exhaust valves were all at zero point. 0.10 millimeters clearance which is perfect i checked the alignment of everything so i lined up the counterbalances you've got the crank and you've got the counterbalance and they basically do that but when the piston is at top dead center you've got a little hole in the side of your engine case which you then take a bolt out and you put a little thing in that locks the counterbalancer in place so that means that your top dead center counterbalance is where it should be cranks where it should be everything's where it should be so at that point you can do your valve install and you can do all of that stuff so basically i took it all apart did it all again reinstalled everything made sure everything was balanced like double checked the cam chain the cam chain tensioner checked that everything was all lined up and yeah everything's absolutely fine when it comes to installing the cam provided your counterbalancer is locked so you know you're at top dead center it's all about this hole there's a little thing that holds the camshaft in place so it can't move and the bolt that holds that holder goes through there and you're at top dead center and everything's lined up where it should be that's where you are so you do it all up make sure that you're lined up here your cam chains over here and it's tensioned you are good to go so with the valve clearance is done and everything being absolutely spot on this then arrived Annoyingly, I couldn't use the one that I already had for testing the fuel pressure. It's really, really straightforward. If you don't have an auto decompressor, which this bike does because of the camshaft, all you do is you unplug your spark plug, and you put this in, wind that in, it doesn't have to be super tight, and you crank the engine until the pressure won't go any higher. Now this leveled out at 85 PSI. If you don't have an auto decompressor, it would go up to more like 150 plus kind of thing. And knowing that the auto decompressor won't allow me to reach those super high heights of the mid 150s or whatever, I then just left it attached like actually by accident like I, I got distracted by editing and stuff like that and came back to it six days later and it had only dropped 1.7 percent in pressure down to like 83 and that basically is a leak down test and so that pressure could have been lost at that point there it could have been lost at that point there 1.7 percent over six days is amazing compression so i know for a fact that i've got compression the valves are right but the bike still won't start So I've solved fuel issue, most of which are like things that I've done wrong myself. We've got compression, that was spot on. Good engine build, Mike, apart from one little thing. I'm gonna leave it there because I know that even though I've already filmed everything right up to pretty much discovering what the real problem is and it's a big one, I have the whole spark issue in which there is so many things wrong with the spark issue. It's too long to put into this video, so. Call la mia vita. Join me in the next episode for everything wrong with the spark. <laughs> There's so many things. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm so close to getting this. And I'm also really close to the anniversary of the bike being run over. That's how long this has gone on for. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, look at tutto copo fa See you in the next one.